All right, so it's time for our second hot topic. And today being Technophile Tuesday, we'll be taking a look at the impact of technology in agriculture. I have my guest on Lakbejuma, who is the founder of My Food Angels. You're welcome to the breakfast. Thank you, Maureen. First of all, tell me, how is it possible for a farmer to look so glamorous, <laughs> so cute, as you are looking right now? Thank you. I, I mean, I take that as a compliment. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> So what kind of a farmer are you? I am in the food sector. I am a, I, I'm into backward integration. Um, what we do is we ensure that homemakers, um, busy professionals have food, not only have food, but know what to do with the food that they have. Mm. So that's what my food enjoys is all about. All right, I'm going to discuss that with you in detail at another forum. Not on this. This Tuesday, let's talk about technology in agriculture. How much of technology uh, do we have involved in agriculture in Nigeria today? So um, I'd say the, the adaptation of technology in agricultural sector in Nigeria today, um, we are seeing gradual um, um, stakeholders, you know, um, performance in, in that sector. But the truth of the matter is we could have more. We have, we have over about 80% farming still done in the, in, in the, in the normal agri how we grew up whole and cut last way um, we could adopt more when it comes to agri um, we have a close sector of people who are it's gaining momentum technology is gaining momentum in that sector that is the young people are beginning to embrace more eating more healthy and also ensuring that they are they want to know where their food is coming from and how the technology that is used but the large-scale farming, which is what controls majority of what we eat, is still being um, controlled by the normal, traditional way of, because, of farming. Isn't that because of illiteracy and perhaps maybe lack of funding? Is that oh, yes. I mean, it stems to that. It stems from, from literacy, like you said. Um, there is a lot of um, industry players that are working in that space to educate the farmers. But the truth of the matter is, as much as education is important, also funding is important. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of farmers in the space. They probably have the, the, the knowledge of the technology, but where's the access to the funding? Mm -hmm. and, that's where the, and that's where we need more, more um, private sector and, and even our government sector um, coming to play in that, in that space. Currently, we, we're, we're, we're facing tomato Ebola. I'm not sure if that's a widespread news right now, but tomato Ebola is one that could have been curtailed with the right information. Tell and then, us what tomato Ebola is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's from a, a, a parasite called Tuta, Tuta Absoluta. Hmm. And what it does is that it attacks your tomatoes. If you check the price of tomatoes right now in, in the yeah, farm, of course, it, it has kind of rocketed. Exactly. We we got a, a basket of tomatoes in Mile 12 for sixty thousand on on Saturday. It's unheard of. Now if you go into researching what how we could even curb that mm -hmm. it comes from even seed rotation it comes from 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 knowing what to how to introduce some certain parasites mm -hmm. that can attack that tutor absoluta you know how do we harvest nigeria we harvest we harvest when it is ripe but in in modernized economies they don't harvest when it is ripe they harvest when the when the plant itself has reached a certain maturity physiological maturity and then they have they have us and they put in cold rooms we don't have that cold storage facility we have it but not in in excess definitely not you know enough. not not definitely not enough not enough that can control what the population eats so and then that which which we have already makes the prices skyrocket you know so we we there's a dearth of of technology there's a gap there's a wide gap that needs to be bridged Okay, well, if you just joined us, um, you're just finding out the reason for the high cost in tomato today, uh, why you're buying a bucket, uh, that small bucket, at 7,065, and the basket at 60,000, is because of what she's described as tomato Ebola. Now, um, this lack of storage facility, which is part of, is it part of the technology? Oh, yes, about? definitely, it's part of it. We yes. still suffer from, it, for, for, from that. Um, I mean, growing up, we do know I do remember that one of the reasons why we can only eat mangoes, for instance, when mangoes in season and not eat it when it's out of season is because we lack the storage facilities. 
and that has affected every other crop and even our yam and all of that. Yeah. Um, how are we going to get out of this? Literally, it, it boils down to more people picking interest in this sector where we are. More people, the governments themselves, also picking more interest. We don't, we, we appreciate what the government has done so far, and we, but we, we need much more, even more research being done. Um, for instance, like you said, you know, we other countries actually have planting all year round. We do, they don't wait for season. You don't hear tomato season or, or mango season in other countries. It's all it's produced all year round. How, well, how are we not able to do that here in Nigeria? It's because there is a gap, and that gap can only be filled by those who are currently playing in the space, spreading the word, and then those who are not in the space right now but have the funding to come in. Now, a lot of people want to spin money around when it comes to our Greek. Our Greek sector is very um, lucrative. It is very profitable. But guess what? It is not the quick fix kind of it's a long-term investment and so we need the big money money people to come in and who understand futuristic planning to say we want to do this and do this well for nigeria the value chain in agriculture yeah. uh, how, how 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 popular is is that to people how or maybe i should put it this way do many people know about the value chains in agriculture and how they can reap from them um, so, yes, there's education that needs to be done also in that space. Mm. Um, you have people who <clears throat> probably just want to play in the space of um, planting, for instance. Meanwhile, in, from that planting, you're generating um, um, waste. That's another part of the, of the, of the value chain in agri. You know, you gener generate waste. That waste can be turned into money, can be turned into, into fuels and all of that. We have that space. We, I currently am playing in the space of, of you know, aggregation and distribution. You know, that's another space. You have another space where they're talking the technology. You know, so not everybody is keen into it. We see more people these days when they say they want to invest in agri, they probably want to invest in um, a, a get-rich-quick scheme, which a lot of people are falling scam um, victims for. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we need to... For anyone who wants to come into the agri space, they need to literally be educated on where to start, where, where our Greek starts really, even from the seed formation, mm -hmm. you know. So where, are we, where do you want to play? Because there's so many, there's so many. Is there any kind of regulation, especially now that you've alluded to this uh, scamming that's going on, um, turn to some radio stations, you hear some people promoting whatever, whatever, and I imagine that's part of where the scamming is coming from. Is there any kind of regulation? And two, because time is no longer on our side, I haven't really talked about uh, government involvement because I do know that government cannot solve all of our problems. Yes, However, definitely. food security is a major and should be a major priority of any responsible government mm -hmm. so t the two things the regulation to save people from all these kind of scammers and two the level of government involvement in bridging some of these gaps that you've revealed so yes there is some form of regulation but we could have better mm -hmm. we could have we could have um, more education even in this in that space too um, then when it comes to government participation yes like you rightly said government cannot do everything um, the government is definitely they have their work cut out for them in this space i i would i would i would advocate more of even pub, public sector the private sector sorry coming into the space and helping us make sense of this our agri space <laughs> all right so would you say that Technology is the future of agriculture, farming in Nigeria. Technology is the future of everything. Is it safe? It is. Safe? It's, it's not comp so controlled te technology mm -hmm. because you could actually have technology that has now evolved into getting, you know, human beings exposed to cancerous, carcinogenic, carcinogenic uh, um, 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 properties. But yes, controlled technology. Controlled. How, how are we importing the technology that, and to fit into our own climate? Yeah. You know, we can't we can't import, import technology that was made for, for instance, the cold temperate, the cold regions. Yeah. So this our own space. We need to come up. That's why I said research needs to be done mm -hmm. in this our own space to know what the technologies are 
um, efficient for our own space. Also to avoid harm to people exactly, and definitely. our environment. Yes. Thank you so much, Olapoji Uma, for your time. I wish you had more time, but I'm sure we'll have to do this again. Perhaps we can my pleasure. or yeah. fix some other time. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Olapoji Uma, founder of My Food Angels, has joined me to take a look at the impact of technology in agriculture. Well, welcome back. It's the home stretch. We couldn't give you sports uh, this morning, but um, we do have the quote of the day. Just you have the quote of the day. Yes, I do. And it is by Daniel Bell. And it is on technology. So technology like art is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. That is really wonderful. Soaring imagine exercise human imagination. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the size of the show for today. Many thanks for being a part of it. My name is Justin. Akadonia. And I am Maureen. Do have a splendid day and remember to join us tomorrow morning for the breakfast.